What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be trying to do a nice and chill Godzilla news roundup. This one for Monarch Legacy of Monsters in which we will be covering the events that occurred in December of 2022. I believe this is the last time we're going to be talking about Monarch Legacy of Monsters events from 2022 before we get into the brand new current year. <laughs> Just as a little disclaimer, I want to say again, for those of you who are unaware, I partnered with Apple TV Plus, big thank you to them, so I have screeners for Monarch Legacy of Monsters, so I've checked out a few episodes of it, haven't finished the show yet, but I've watched a few, so I just want to let you know that I'll be a little more informed in my speculation in this video than normal. First of all, let's start out with some art. These first pieces come to us from The Godzilla Guy. These are his King of the Monsters tributes, I really love this one with Godzilla roaring in front of the moon with the scratches on his face, that's great. He's also got a Mothra, a Rodan, that's fun with the lava coming off of him, and a King Ghidorah roaring in front of the lightning looks wonderful great job man i love it this next piece comes to us from dan mora and it's wonderful this looks amazing his godzilla looks deranged i love this great art style love the king Ghidorah here the composition's great i just love this whole piece man i'm really into it i also love the detailing on Ghidorah's closest neck here with some scorches on it and the way it interacts with the smoke just looks wonderful great piece i really like this one this next piece comes to us from gurian whose name i did not pronounce right but this is his kong versus King Ghidorah. I didn't really know where else to put this one, so I want to show it off here. This is just freaking wonderful. Kong with the axe. I love it. The, I also love that the axe is like sparking kind of lightning style, and that Kong's got these glowing blue eyes. And then the way Ghidorah's wrapped around him. It's just so cool. I would love to see Kong take on Ghidorah, and if Kong had his electric abilities, like in King Kong versus Godzilla, I know that Ghidorah shoots gravity beams and not technically lightning, but it's pretty lightning-esque. I don't know. I think Kong would actually do pretty well against the Ghidorah under the condition that he's got his his lightning abilities. Based on Godzilla vs. Kong, that guy does not take much fall damage, much like the Monster vs. Godzilla, so I don't know if Ghidorah is going to be able to do that whole dropping trick on Kong either. This next piece comes to us from Binet, which is just this amazing Destroya Ava Unit 1 style. I absolutely love it. I love the crossover blend with the art. I would love to see more kaijus done in this style. This looks amazing. I love this Destroya redesign. He looks truly like the devil. This captures a more sinister vibe than the the real Destroya. I think it's so much creepier. I really, really love it. And I would love to see this guy do battle with the Ava units and with Godzilla. That'd be amazing. Michael Doherty back in the day shared some concept art from Matt Alsop. This is from Godzilla King of the Monsters. And these are the cave paintings depicted in the film. These were on the Monarch website. They pop up briefly in the movie. And they've got all sorts of cool pieces here. So this first one's one we've seen before. And it's Ghidorah shooting his gravity beams at the tree with all the people fighting him. I love that one. The next one is this crazy one of Rodan with these like flames coming out of his wings. That's great. This Mothra one's really beautiful. I don't quite know what it symbolizes with the moon cycle above Mothra, but it's very pretty. I guess she's being worshipped as a celestial god, maybe because of her bioluminescence. This next piece shows tribal people worshipping Mothra, and I like that it tells us that this was taken in a World War II bunker cave. I also like that they've added the men standing in front of it here, but again you've got the celestial thing above Mothra, so I wonder if that was supposed to be an early part of the movie that they kind of dropped at some point. This is wonderful. I love the Mothra design here as well. She looks beautiful. This Ghidorah one I do believe we've seen before, and this one takes very heavy inspiration from Kong Skull Island, and it's good stuff. It just shows off the epicness of King Ghidorah, and this next piece with Rodan is wonderful. This is one from the Monarch website, and it shows Rodan surrounded by flames being attacked by people. Also, interestingly, depicts Rodan with feathers. This piece shows Rodan, like, burning with all these people around him. I guess it's supposed to depict Rodan burning an ancient civilization, so I guess he was never really all that great of a guy. This piece is absolutely wonderful, with Godzilla fighting the Mutos. I love of this, and I do believe that this appears briefly in Godzilla King of the Monsters, and it just shows that the Mutos have been around for a long time and that their history goes way back. And then this piece here shows Godzilla swimming to the surface, which is cool because again it plays on the idea that Godzilla is a sea monster. This final piece might be the most interesting of all as it depicts very clearly Fire Rodan, looking kind of Ghidorah-esque with his pose. Looks a lot like that Ghidorah picture, but this is apparently a huge cave painting depicting Rodan as a devil creature. And yeah, it looks like he's got the flames coming out of his mouth, which was something we talked a lot about in 
King of the Monsters because of course Kong Skull Islands sort of kind of potentially according to some people not me featured what many people perceived to be flames coming out of his mouth and a lot of people thought that 2019's Rodan was going to be a bit more of a fire Rodan than he turned out to be but I personally prefer the Rodan we got in the movie I think it was far more interesting. Speaking of Godzilla King of the Monsters this deleted scene shows Admiral Stenz's death in the Battle of DC. He's pinned down in his ship and I believe he's talking to Colonel Foster here saying he's proud of G-Team which I actually really like. It seems the ship is pinned down probably in the waters. They seem to explode there towards the end. There is a version of this in the Godzilla King of the Monsters novelization but it kind of leaves Stenz's death a little more ambiguous and I've asked Michael Doherty personally if that scene is considered canon and from what he told me it was basically that he would prefer it to be canon but that not really no. If they want to bring Admiral Stenz back then any filmmaker in the world could. It's just a matter of if they choose to and while we're on the topic I want to shout out Godzilla King of the Monsters which I watched last night and it just still really holds up in my opinion. And the more I watch the more I realize that that movie has a lot more love and care put into it than maybe the next installment of the MonsterVerse did. I kind of miss the King of the Monsters days because there was a level of true care and deeper intention behind what was being done with the MonsterVerse and I really miss that. I hope we go back to that soon. Michael Doherty posted that deleted scene as well. You can go check all that out down below. And as we're wrapping up the 2022 news, I'll mention that we were also at this time preparing for the year of the Kaiju, which is 2023. That is what this might officially go down in history as. The return of all of our favorites with Shin Ultraman in the United States, Shin Kamen Rider, Skull Island, Gamma Rebirth, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, the Ultraman anime's final season, Godzilla Minus One, and surely I've missed others. Like there's some live action Ultraman stuff going on. What an amazing year for Kaiju and for monsters and for Godzilla. <laughs> Spiral Studios released the first proper image of the Ultimate Masterline Mothra Imago form. This is the mystical edition and it's just great. I really love it. I'll talk more about the Spiral Studios Mothra I'm sure another time when it kind of went on sale but I just wanted to show off their initial reveal of it because she looks wonderful and I'm a big fan of the 2019 Mothra design and I hope we see it in action again. Getting into Monarch Legacy of Monsters there's not a ton to talk about here but KDM teased that it will be a bomb of a show which I think has to do with the fact that the show's touching on Castle Bravo. I'm gonna assume that's what he's trying to tease there, a bomb of a show, and it's the biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated by the United States, so it kind of seems like that's what he's saying. KDM also states that this show is not connected to Godzilla Aftershock, and I want to take this moment to say that as somebody who is watching Monarch Legacy of Monsters, sorry comic fans, goodbye the comics. I just want to say that this is something that I'll talk about in future videos, but Legendary has a big canon problem at the moment, and it's really only a problem that they keep telling us that the comics are canon because they're not and this show very clearly acknowledges that they're not. Lee Sha being in this show completely overrides the entire events of Godzilla Awakening and is not connected to Godzilla Awakening in any way. This show also does not touch upon the events of Godzilla Aftershock as the stuff in the present is not set in 2014 but is actually set a full year later. Set in 2015 so if you want to choose to believe that Aftershock is still canon you definitely can choose to believe that but the show as far as I have seen does not acknowledge it. Now that's not saying that the show can't acknowledge it at some point. Maybe it will in later episodes that I have not seen. But from what I've seen, no acknowledgement of Aftershock as of yet. KDM teases that the Titans and Monarch Legacy of Monsters will not be the missing Titans from Godzilla King of the Monsters. You know, the 17 and counting that we hear about, well, we don't have all of them on screen. We've only seen a couple of them, especially if we're considering the comics may not be canon. Then we really have only seen like four of them. So there's a lot out there that Legendary can still play with. And in my personal opinion, the only Titan we stand a shot of seeing in this show is Baphomet simply because the Bat Titan from the trailer kind of sort of looks like what we expect Baphomet to look like although I don't think that's who that is. From what I've seen the show kind of sort of features a bit of a monster of the week type aesthetic where a new monster kind of pops up and we're exploring a kind of new creature at least in the first couple episodes. Sometimes that creature is Godzilla and sometimes it's other monsters. So I do want to say that this show does introduce lots of new monsters to the MonsterVerse but one reason that these might not be the Titans from Godzilla King of the Monsters is because a lot of the monsters seen in Monarch Legacy of monsters don't qualify as titans as they are small, they don't have global reach, they're not as durable. They're smaller. They'd be considered mutos or super species. They wouldn't be exactly considered titans and that is an important distinction and so I do want to manage expectations that this show is not dealing with the titans from Godzilla King of the Monsters but instead is presenting new ideas. KDM teased that Gergoji's design was mostly recreated for the show which we have now officially seen in action in the trailer. It looks wonderful in the show. Godzilla looks fantastic. He is been restored to the 2014 design only for the flashback sequences of the show as the modern show features a Godzilla as we have just seen revealed in trailer 2 with brand new dorsal spines that are in between
between his 2014 and 2019 states, which I think is just genius. And I love that they did that. So that's really freaking cool. Monarch has apparently had a composer as far back as 12, 22, 22. I don't exactly know who that composer is yet, but the music in the show is pretty solid. I kind of like it. It's kind of got a bit of a synthy feel. It's very mysterious. I think it's cool. KDM teased that FEMA zones in San Francisco and other cities will return for this show. Homeland Security will be on the case and that this show has a realistic, serious, and grounded tone. As we know, this show kind of follows up on the ideas presented in Godzilla 2014 with the relief camp that Kate goes to in particular representing the relief camp that Ford Brody winds up at at the end of 2014. Although it is important to note they're not the same location. They just kind of have similar vibes and I really like it. It's a sense of visual consistency and also brings us back to the grounded, realistic take on the MonsterVerse that we really have been missing since Kong Skull Island. So it's cool to go back to that. Now, while I'm not going to tease much, KDM will tease it for me and I'll talk about it. KDM teased some plot details for Legacy of Monsters here with a brief plot teaser stating that this show has a beautiful family story with reveals that should be kept a secret. And these reveals are monarch bound. Now I'm going to go out on a guess here and think what KDM was trying to tell us is that there's a beautiful family story in the show because the show is about a family. It's about Kate and Kentaro, their connection, their family. And I'm assuming that the reveals he's won and kept secret was Bill Randa's appearance, not just the young Bill Randa, but specifically John Goodman's return, which we have seen in the Legacy of Monsters trailer. And I agree, that is a crazy thing to throw in the trailer. A new character was teased, one played by Christopher Haydahall, and he was set to play a general in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. He's playing a character named General Puckett. He's kind of awesome. I really like his screen presence. He really commands the scenes that he's in. And you can actually hear him talking in the second trailer for Legacy of Monsters, where he says, this is gonna give me nightmares. That's him. That's him talking. There's a DP list confirmed for Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Jess Hall from WandaVision would be doing the first two episodes with Matt Shackman, also from WandaVision. Gene Philip Goatsart was the second DP for Zack Snyder's Justice League, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and he would be doing episodes three and four of this show. There's some great shots in episode three that he really worked for. And Chris Seeger of Watchmen and Game of Thrones would be doing episodes five, six, nine, and ten. So the only episodes we don't quite know is episodes seven and eight. And I'm sure I'll talk about that as we keep going through the show. For those worried that the DPs and the directors are going to lack this visual consistency, well, the show does have two showrunners with Chris Black and Matt Fraction. There is a very consistent feel in the show, and I personally have not noticed a difference in the directing style or the cinematography style so far. KDM confirms that by December 2022 that the first episode was in post-production and that the first few episodes had already moved to post-production by the time principal photography on the show wrapped. Finally, the last bit of news we have to talk about is that Emily Steers, or Emily Stretz, not totally sure how to say her name, who's from Lost in Space, True Blood, and Outcast, joined Monarch as an editor for the show, and the show is very well edited. That'll do it for this one, guys. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you very much for the support on the Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. I guess that'll be our time for now, and I cannot wait to jump into the next year with you guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.